the experiment here. Hi everyone, uh, my name's Terry and this is my Van de Graaff generator and Leyden jar, um, which I built recently. The Van de Graaff generator I built earlier in the year, but only the um, the other week I built this Leyden jar. Um, and it's quite good for for her using the Van de Graaff generator on days like today where it's particularly humid and you can't uh, you can't get any sort of decent spark off it. So what I've been doing is charging the Leyden jar. You let the charge build up for a bit and then when it discharges you get much healthier sparks than you do just straight from the Van de Graaff generator. So I'll, um, I'll talk to you a bit about how I went about building the Van de Graaff generator and um, yeah, some, how um, I've been combating some of the issues uh, that you get from using it on days like today where it's humid. Um, this is the first video on this channel um, and I, I might make a, a few others about some of the, the different things I'm interested in. I'm not a scientist by uh, profession, uh, I teach digital graphics um, kind of through the day and then by night I, I play about with this sort of thing. So um, yeah, if, if, if I say anything that somebody thinks is incorrect, please correct me. Um, like I say, I'm not professional and I, I kind of I learn this stuff as I go along, but I just thought I'd maybe start sharing some videos about it because, um, well, I find it interesting and I, I know there's other people out there that find this kind of thing interesting as well. Okay, so I'll crack on and, and show you how the, the Vanagraph generator works. Okay, so um, first of all, I'd like to kind of apologise for the, the crudity of my setup here. I don't, I don't have a professional studio or anything like that to film this in, so I'm, I'm filming it in the room where I do all my other hobbies. That's why there's crap all over the place. <clears throat> also, the audio might not be that great because I, I'm actually filming this on my phone. Uh, I need to get myself a, a better camera and microphone if, if people take an interest in these videos. So, anyway, um, yeah, the Van de Graaff. I didn't follow any kind of instructions or anything like that when I was building it. I just sort of uh, based on designs of uh, various other Van de Graaffs that I'd seen online, uh, watching videos on YouTube and reading what I could online about um, about them. There, I noticed there was various forums and that sort of thing where you can build these from, but overall there isn't a, a huge amount of help uh, or a resource, one single resource that you can rely on um, on building these. I did see um, someone had made an Instructables uh, page that, that kind of took you through how to go about building one, but um, I just decided to, to kind of wing it myself and um, and build it how I thought would maybe be best going by the, 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 the research and stuff that I've done online. Um, for example, the, the acrylic shaft that I use on my one is um, <clears throat> some people use PVC piping instead of the, the clear acry acrylic. Um, I've seen people using black PVC piping, but I also read that the, uh, using the black PVC piping, um, the, the carbon that they use in that can can absorb some of the charge from the belt as it makes its way from the, uh, the, the bottom of the Van de Graaff to the top. Um, I power mine with a, a drill. I, d I was using a sewing machine motor before but it was far too powerful and uh, I thought it was going to fall to bits when it was on. Um, the variable speed controller that I got with the sewing machine motor wasn't that great either. Even on its lowest setting it still was like causing an earthquake. So yeah, I just use um, one of these G-clamps um, on the, uh, on the trigger of the drill and by adjusting the, the pressure on that I can actually kind of get a bit of variable speed. Also this is a brand new drill with a, a lithium ion battery and it lasts for ages. Uh, the, the top of the Van de Graaff is um, two bowls from Ikea. That's fairly standard practice for, for, um, for building these things nowadays. I've seen, uh, I've seen lots of people using these online. You can get them bigger and I actually meant to buy the, the larger size but uh, these ones arrived and I thought okay fine I'll just have to, to work with what I've been what I've been uh, uh, sent. I am um, the, the the bottom one. <clears throat> the bottom bowl I, I cut a hole in using an angle, uh, not an angle grinder, a grinder on um, the end of a Dremel, and then I, I I've covered all the sharp edges. I filed it afterwards, but then I covered the edges with electrical tape, um, and then I just combined the two using electrical tape as well. Uh, inside that I have a, a brass mesh which is used as the, the collector on the inside of the dome. That's positioned just above the, the top roller. The top roller, roller in, uh, in, in my design is a tef uh, sorry, nylon. I've got a, a Teflon roller at the bottom and um, the, the brush at the bottom there for, for collecting the electrons from ground. Um, the, the brush at the bottom there just goes to a, a, an earth wire from an old electrical cable and I plug that into um, a the uh, mains electric but I've only got the earth connected and uh, I've just fixed it to a wooden MDF base here with some brackets that I think um, I can't even remember where I got them from, B&Q or Poundland or something like that 
um, the shaft that I rotate the Teflon roller with on the bottom is a, a long, I think it's maybe a oh, X amount of inches screw. Again, that wasn't expensive either. In fact, the whole the whole build itself only cost maybe about fifty pounds in total. Just um, nah, maybe even less than that. It wasn't expensive anyway. The, uh, the the belt I use is a latex rubber exercise belt, and again, that's something uh, pretty standard that's used online. Um, I've seen people using um, uh, making belts out of uh, the same kind of thing that ladies' tights are made out of. I'm not sure what that material is called. Uh, and then they've used PVC rollers at the top and bottom, um, and they seem to be getting pretty good sparks with that. But the, the kind of the largest spark that I've had with my ones maybe about four inches. So I think because I built this just at the beginning of summer, where it started to get very humid, um, that I think that's probably what's been uh, well. That's what I'm attributing to the. <coughs> Excuse me. The, yeah, the not so large sparks that I've been getting. Um, I'll wait and get again and see see what kind of size I get in winter when the air is a bit drier. So um, to kind of combat that, in the meantime, I built this Leyden jar, which is just basically a pasta container which I bought from Asda, wrapped in uh, aluminium foil tape. Um, again, connecting it to ground, I just took a, an electrical wire, um, stripped off the uh, the one of the, the connections, I think live or something like that, but I'm not plugging it into live when it goes into mains obviously. Um, I sorted the uh, the plug out so that everything else was disconnected and that only the, um, uh, the so that the live was connected to the earth wire and the, the socket, the plug. And uh, the top of this is just, um, I think I used um, like a ball cock from a toilet if I remember correctly. I think I bought that from B&Q and again I coated that with aluminium foil and burnished that a bit so that it was nice and smooth. Um, Again, to, to, to avoid losing charge because the corona effect, <clears throat> um, I wanted it to be as smooth as possible, so I spent, I think, about an hour just smoothing it out with um, a, a burnishing tool, which um, uh, I had in the house anyway. Um, the inside of the Leyden jar, so this ball is connected to a chain, I'll show you. So, yeah, the, uh, <clears throat> the inside of the Leyden jar is just filled with salt water. And then I've got the uh, the, the, the foil coated ball cock at the top here, it has a chain connection and just goes down into that salt water. The salt water um, kind of uh, acts as your, your connection from the interior to the exterior. That's where you get your capacitance from, the, the, the charge moving between um, the uh, exterior foil and the, uh, the salt water inside. I have seen people actually coating the inside of their Leyden jars with um, with a foil or, or something like that. Uh, the problem was I, I was having difficulty getting my hand in to actually do that and make it smooth enough so that I, um, it wouldn't cause any sort of issues. Uh, so I just filled mine with salt water instead. You can use normal water as well, but um, salt water is more conductive um, because of the sodium uh, in, in salt. Apparently that's a better conductor than just straight water. Uh, so the entire exterior of the Leyden jar, I'll try and pick this up here, is coated in... Um, Aluminium, foil, uh, sorry, uh, aluminium tape, even the bottom, and then I've got it connected to ground, uh, like I said before, um, on the outside, that's where it kind of gets its positive electrons from. Um, I haven't actually measured the capacitance on this yet, it'd be, be interesting to see like what kind of charge it's capable of holding, um, but in, in the meantime it kind of does the, does the job I need it to do, which is um, retain charge from the Van de Graaff generator. Um, the uh, I've seen people online. Uh, you can take like a PVC pipe and rub a bit of material on it. And so if you rub it towards the um, the top of your Leyden jar, the the charge from the the, the, the kind of the trigo electric effect between the material and the um, the PVC pipe rubbing together, the charge from that can actually charge these up. And similarly to to um, the Van de Graaff. Um, like the longer you leave it on uh, connected to your Van de Graaff generator, the, the more charge it's going to hold and larger sparks. So the um, the kind of the, the 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 longer you can be bothered to, to sit and rub your two different materials together and generate more charge, the more charge it's going to hold, and, and again you'll get you'll get a larger spark from it. But um, I couldn't be bothered to doing that, so <laughs> uh, I haven't actually tried it yet. Like I say, I've just been connecting it to the Van de Graaff generator and seeing what kind of sparks I get I get um, I get using the, the two together. Um, so yeah, th I, this cost like next to nothing to to build. The, this was uh, cheapest chips. I think it was maybe about two fifty, three pounds from from Asda, and the ball cock. I think again, maybe a couple of quid. 
Um, I've used a bit of hot glue there just to connect the two. And there's a, a I think I just bent the foil <clears throat> um, into sort of a, a shaft and bashed it together so it was smooth and fed that through a hole that I drilled in the top of the lid and connected the chain, which I had a bit of spare chain in the house anyway, but again, I think you can get that for very cheap. And uh, I did buy the, the ball chain, which I used to connect to the Van de Graaff tenor, but again, pennies. So yeah, you can make yourself a pretty large capacitor or a Leyden jar if you're uh, um, on, a, on a very small budget. Um, so yeah, I'll, 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 uh, I'll show you the two working together now. Okay, so I'll show you the size of the sparks we're getting today. Um, I don't think they'll be that great because of the humidity that we've got just now. That's charged up with it. Yeah, next to nothing. I don't know if you can even see that on the camera. Yeah, there we go. Well, that was a bit better. So this stick that I'm holding here is connected to ground. Okay, I'll stop that there. Okay, so you could see the sparks weren't that great there. So what I'm going to do next is connect the Leyden jar here up to the Van de Graaff generator using a, um, a ball chain, the same kind of thing you get in your bathroom that um, connects your, 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 your plug to your bath. Uh, I think the re I've seen other people using this online. I think the reason they use it is because of the, the, the structure of this kind of chain might be better for holding charge and you're, you're less likely to, to, um, to, to lose charge because of the corona effect. So um, sh 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 th 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 things with sharp uh, corners and stuff on them are more likely to lose charge because the, the charge can arc off um, sharp points and that sort of thing. At least that's my, my understanding of it. So I'll go ahead and, and tape this up to the, uh, the top of the Van de Graaff generator here. Oh. Trying to get that flat on there. Okay, so the, the, the idea is now that, that when the Van de Graaff generator is charging, the charge will flow across to the Leyden jar and that'll, um, that'll begin to charge, much like a capacitor does. And uh, we should hopefully see a much better spark um, coming off the top of the, the Leyden jar when I, when I move the earth rod to it this time. Um, so I'll go and turn on the Van de Graaff generator. I'll have to let it charge for a bit, because like a capacitor in real life, this needs to, to, to charge up a bit first. So um, bear with me two seconds. Just let that charge for a little minute longer. Let's give it a go just now, see what kind of sparks we're getting just now. Maybe I won't touch that just yet in case I get a shot. Um, another interesting thing to do is um, you, you can you can really see how how time affects um, the amount of charge going into the laser jar. So the longer you leave it, the more charge you accumulate. So if I do it just now, and we 
we get a not bad spark because we've been charging all the while I've been talking. If I do it again right now, you'll see it probably won't be as strong. Yeah, it's much weaker. So the longer you leave it, the more charge it accumulates. If I try again. Yeah, again, fairly, quite weak. So if I leave it for um, leave it for a minute, bear with me. You'll see there's a, di a, 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 a direct effect of, between um, the, the, the charging time and the length of the spark that you get from the laser jar. Okay, that should be long enough. I'll give it a go now. Yeah, you get a much healthier spark there. So yeah, um, that's my Van de Graaff generator and Leyden jar. Uh, again, apologies for the, the crudity of my setup and the, the poor audio quality. It's uh, just working with the, the best I have just now. Um, if this is received well, I'll consider doing some other videos about the different things I'm interested in. I like to play about with uh, robotics. Um, I make automatons like the, uh, the chap you can see at the side here. Um, just generally play about with electronics, enjoy painting, magic tricks, um, I have an interest in insects, animals, um, yeah, just loads of crap that other people might have an interest in as well. So yeah, if you if you like this one, I'll um, I'll uh, I'll think about making some others. Uh, thanks very much. The experiment here.